Hey guys, it's Brian with Turp Mechanic. Today I want to talk to you about the difference between Irigreen 2.0 sprinklers and their new 3.0 sprinklers. Uh, those are the sprinklers that were released in August of 2025. Here in my backyard, you can see I've got PVC pipe lined up on the ground. I'm going to be expanding my Irigreen irrigation system into my backyard. This is my backyard. But before I do that, I want to show you the two sprinklers. I literally have them out of the ground. I have a 2.0 sprinkler and a new 3.0 sprinkler. Here are my notes, because I don't want to forget anything. But what you're looking at here is this is the old Irigreen 2.0 sprinkler. This is the new Irigreen 3.0 sprinkler. As you can see, the 3.0 sprinkler is significantly uh, more compact. It has been fully redesigned, um, and uh, everything about the design I actually like way more than this one but the design itself is not the selling point. First of all, as you flip this around, you can tell under the bottom, this is the inlet for the Irigreen 2.0, and here the inlet for the 3.0 is on the side. You also notice that the 3.0 uses a hard swing, uh, swing valves, uh, what do you call that? It's a swing joint. So there's nothing flexible about this and nothing can pop off. It's all like threaded on. And then here you can uh, attach it to your PVC line underground. With the older 2.0, everything is on the bottom and you've got this clamp on the bottom. Some of them have two clamps, but this is a flex pipe, which is convenient. But the problem with the flex pipe is that you've got to clamp it on. And when you don't use an ICV valve uh, at the front of your water line, then that means that this line is fully pressurized at all time. So this can, and it has in my case here in my yard, this thing has come off a couple different times. So I've had to repair this connection. And I mean, that results in a catastrophic leak. I fixed it by putting an ICV valve at the beginning so that this stuff is not fully pressurized uh, for, the, for the entire time that it's underground but uh, that is an optional thing. So if you want to roll the dice, you could put this in the ground, no ICV valve, and uh, everything will work great. Hopefully it won't leak. This one is not ever going to have a catastrophic leak, but because uh, nothing is glued, uh, it's all threaded, there could be a trickle leak. It's unlikely to be anything substantial um, if you put this stuff together tightly, but, uh, but there's almost no risk of a catastrophic leak compared to this one. Also, because this is significantly more compact, you're talking about your trench has to be this much deep. That's about four, four and a half inches or so deeper if you're putting in the 2.0 valve or a 2.0 um, sprinkler head. This one, your trench can be much shallower. Obviously, you've still got like, you know, a good Obviously, you still got like a good trench at least eight inches deep, but that's a lot better than a 12 to 13 inch trench for the 2.0. Now, generally speaking, on average, depending on sales and whatnot, the 2.0 valve is here. Let me refer to my notes. The 2.0 valve is somewhere around $180. You have to spend about $100 more to get to the 3.0, and then beyond this, uh, each one of these has an upgraded XP version. The XP versions are going to add um, more refined. It's basically a software upgrade. It's going to give you more refined um, spray control. So, so the non-XP version is going to give you every foot, like a foot control. Um, you know, like it's going to spray 20 feet or 21 feet, but you can't control it to 21 and a half. Um, the XP version gives you half foot increments. So it's gonna give you a more controlled, um, you can dial it in more, more precisely on your yard. Not only that, uh, the XP models are going to take into, control, uh, take into consideration a variability of water pressure. So when water pressure in your lawn uh, maybe changes from day to day um, because of well pressure or maybe your city pressure is uh, variable. The spray, pa uh, the spray pattern is going to adjust based on the water pressure coming in better on the XP models than the non-XP models. The XP models are going to add a roughly $90 more to the price. So you're looking at base 180 
you come up to the uh, 3.0 model and you come up to about 280 and then you add an extra $90 to go to the XP. I think the XP models are significantly worth it. Now with the 3.0, let me flip it around so you can actually see. The 3.0 model gives you 16 spray, I'm gonna call them jets. So 16 of these things are gonna be spraying out over the arc in your lawn. Whereas the 2.0, only has 14. Now, you know, 16 versus 14, if you're spraying out over 30 feet, that extra, uh, those two extra uh, spray jets give you a roughly 15% better or smoother or more continuous uh, watering action over the duration of your arc. So if you're spraying something that's like maybe 12 feet wide, that extra 15% probably doesn't matter that much. But if you're spraying a full 25 to 30 feet, those two extra spray nozzles are going to be very, very worth it. I've got videos on this channel showing how the spray arc is not very uniform, at least above ground. By the time it gets into the water, into the soil, it kind of disperses out and it's pretty even. But the arc itself is not very continuous or even uh, at long distances. So the extra two spray pattern or spray nozzles, spray jets, will give you a smoother and more continuous flow uh, over over your lawn. Uh, so. In my front yard where I cover the most ground and here in the backyard where I'm going to be covering the most ground, I'm definitely going to be using these new 3.0 heads. Another point of difference, differentia uh, differentiation between them is this head right here is not self-cleaning. This is the 2.0 model. You have to, every now and then, you got to pull this apart. You can unscrew the top. I'll make a video about how to clean and maintain these things because I've had them in the lawn for a couple years now. Um, but you have to do it manually. You have to take this apart, flush out sediment, flush out uh, stuff that it filters out. And uh, if you don't do it, then they start working less and less well over, you know, over the seasons. Uh, this unit, this modern unit, this 3.0 unit, um, all automatically self flushes. So it will, it's basically self cleaning. So the maintenance and the, the regular routine maintenance that you have to do to this is much less than this. So if you don't ever maintain your stuff once they're in the ground, this one is going to continue performing just like it's supposed to for a lot longer into the future. This uh, mechanism that goes up and down is also a lot smoother than this one. This one is a little bit more gritty and clunky. Uh, and that's a big deal because it's not really a gigantic deal, but sometimes water pressure stays slightly pressurized when the sprinkler session ends. Uh, meaning this might stay slightly above ground before it finally goes back. Um, so if you're running a mower, maybe you've got like a gardener company, a mowing company that comes out, you know, every Wednesday morning to mow your lawn. You don't want this thing sitting like half an inch above the ground uh, and the mower hitting it. Now, I've never had that problem before, but this one, it just, it just slides up and down way easier. That is going to be a much lower risk. Again, I don't think that feature is the main selling point. It's just cream on the top. It's like whipped cream on top of your pie. Now, another main difference, major difference, uh, in my opinion, between uh, the new 3.0 and the 2.0 is that this gives you diagnostic, uh, real-time diagnostic uh, results in the app that you probably have on your phone. So you can run diagnostics on this and it will tell you if there's an error, but it's not going to tell you what the error is. It could just can't do that. Uh, the modern 3.0 system, it will tell you if water is not coming. Maybe your ICV valve is um, broken and it's not letting water in. So it's going to tell you, oh, you know, there's not just an error, but the water is not getting into the sprinkler head and that's why it's not working. It's going to tell you maybe you hit uh, your cord uh, with a shovel and damaged it. Uh, whatever the thing is, maybe it's clogged and it will tell you, you you've got a clog. So when you run diagnostics on this, this, I mean, this is basically a little computer. Both of these are. This is just a better computer. When you run diagnostics, you're not just going to get a basic error message. You're going to get information on what the problem is. It might be a software thing. It might be a hardware thing. It might be something that Irrigreen support can help you out with. It might be something that you can just go out into the yard and fix yourself. 
as opposed to getting an error here, and you have no idea what the problem is. The diagnostic feature of the 3.0 is fantastic. However, you're unlikely to need, um, you're unlikely to, to get errors on either one of these things. But the thing is, if you get an error, just like that, uh, the annoying check engine light on your car, I'm like, oh, okay, the check engine light's on. What's the problem? I have no clue. At least this one is going to tell you what the problem likely is. However, it's not going to be usable if you don't have the Eregreen 3 control box. So two years ago, two plus years ago, when I put Eregreen into my lawn, I put in the Eregreen 2.0 box, or I don't know, I guess it's the, the older generation box. And it doesn't really look really fancy, but it works really great. However, it does not run the Eregreen 3 uh irrigation heads. So if you do want to put irrigation heads in your lawn for the first time, you need to buy the Irrigreen, uh, the Irrigreen 3 box. If you already have Irrigreen in your lawn and you want to upgrade to the Irrigreen 3 heads, then you need to also upgrade the box. If you just buy the heads, they're not going to work with the old box. It would be nice if they could work on the old box, but maybe not have the, those diagnostic features or something. Um, but they just don't work on the old box at all. For me, I have the Irrigreen 3 box in my garage. It's set up. I've got the old box still mounted on the wall, but it's not doing anything. But the 3 box is what's controlling my whole system. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a new head here in the middle of my yard, my backyard. So I've never really run Irrigreen systems in the back of my property. So I'm going to be putting it in the backyard and I'm going to be digging up uh, my main front yard lawn uh, to swap out an Irrigreen 2 head with an Irrigreen 3 head. Now, I also have an Irrigreen head in my dog kennel over there and over in the front of my house over by my uh, driveway. Both of those are working just fine. They are the older 2.0 uh, heads. They work great. And I find it annoying to have to dig stuff out of the ground and replace them when everything is working just fine. The front of the yard, um, I get, I want better spray coverage because I'm covering more ground. So I'm going to take the effort, I'm going to go through the effort to dig that out and replace the 2.0 head with a 3.0 head. Maybe in the future, I will dig out the others. But right now, I don't want to drop five, 600 bucks on two more heads and then do the work of digging them out of the ground. So let that be um, a lesson to you. Yeah, the 3.0 heads are better than the 2.0 heads, but for me, I'm only replacing one of my 2.0 heads that are currently in the ground with a 3.0, but in the future I am, I am going to be splurging for the 3.0 heads to go into new zones here in my yard. I think it's worth paying for those 3.0 heads over the 2.0. And certainly if you've got issues with one that's already in the ground, go ahead and swap it out. But if everything's running fine and you got no complaints, then I'd probably wait for a sale or for the motivation. You're like, I just want to dig. Uh, so then, then go ahead and do it. But there's no rush. So with all of that said, I'm going to start digging today trenching all of this stuff into the ground. If you've got any questions about the Irrigreen 3 sprinklers or 2 sprinklers or about the control box or uh, I don't know, if you just have any questions about my experience running Irrigreen in my yard, mostly, I mean, it's been in the dog kennel in the front yard for the past couple years. So if you've got any questions, drop them in the comment box below. I'm going to have links that you could buy this sort of stuff, but also links to other videos uh, that I've made, content that I've made um, talking about my experience with this product or this uh, this set of products.